throughout the, the period of the last 18 months, we have had to be responsive and, and flexible in our programme delivery and how we deliver our programmes in relation to our teaching, learning assessment and student engagement strategies. Looking at those, reflecting back in terms of what worked really well and what we would bring forward on a, on a more permanent basis. The role of the lecturer has changed now from being simply delivering content to curating uh, content that's out there available, picking the most appropriate pieces and including them in, in their study. And so the move away from delivering content to thinking about what are the key skills that we want our graduates to have and how can I ensure that they, those are being delivered and assessed through my module. Now I have students with me in person, but I still record very key concepts, very short videos which they can go back to and revise if they miss the concept in class. Staff in particular have become creators of their own uh, digital um, content and becoming almost like e-learning designers developers. And this provides really rich media content for students to consume you know, at their time and place and pace. I think the use of video is something that will um, definitely be carried forward in this period. Uh, so whether that be recordings of live lectures or pre-recorded content with tools such as Zoom and H5P and screencasts and software, it's really allowed uh, staff to be able to develop resources. There is an opportunity to having a kind of a blended approach to what we do, not just with teaching but also with things like meetings. You know, maybe one-to-one -one supervision with students, dissertation meetings worked very well online because you could share documents and look at things in real time and they didn't have to be dragged away from their study space in order to have the meeting and then go back to it again. You lose a lot of time like that. They have the best of both worlds. They're, they're with their own group in the incubator and they're accessing the training and mentoring with the group who have a product or service in their own area. I think the initial briefing from the client uh, elements of that could be brought forward. I think that can be conducted very effectively in the online setting. There is no need for the client to come into the classroom setting uh, to conduct that oral briefing. I think that has worked very, very well. Meetings where we would have had to travel a lot, long distance in the past to meet each other from different campuses, we now do those online. So effectively, we've, we've eliminated travel the un unnecessary travel at the very least and you know there's environmental impacts associated with that they're now gone by the wayside where we can call a meeting at a at short notice and have people from different campuses just get together online so which is particularly useful. From a staff point of view is how to look after students who need to have a, a meeting with a team of their lecturers if they're in some kind of difficulty and we've learned that it's perfectly feasible through a, a webinar rather than face to face. I think as a sector, and not just MTU, but I think as a sector, you know, we, we often have very fixed ideas about assessment. Um, I, I, exams are a very good example of that, which have existed for hundreds of years. Um, and now I would like to think that we has, has given us that permission to think about how we can assess more creatively. There's an opportunity to carry forward uh, remote teaching, remote learning in a way that's blended with in-person learning. Uh, this provides people with a great opportunity to minimise their carbon footprint, learn from home, to ensure that disadvantaged regions have the same access to education, uh, while also retaining the benefits of in-person learning for uh, group learning, for leadership development and the development of good communication skills in our students and graduates.